I grew up on the beach on Douglas Island, a small town in Alaska. All summer long, I hiked the trails to the Treadwell Mine. I spent countless hours exploring the ruins and looking for remnants of the thousands of people who once lived and worked there. I imagine the lives of the miners and their families living on the island where I grew up. I am fascinated by the story of greed, gold, and destruction, the story of a town that once was. The Treadwell Mine operated from 1882 to 1922. For a moment in history, it was the largest gold mine in the world. The rich community of Treadwell once included stores, cafes, a bowling alley, dance hall, butcher shop, library, tennis courts, and even a swimming pool. Then in 1917, the mine collapsed, only to close a few years later. The once bustling city of Douglas became a small residential town, which was eventually ravaged by fires. The office building was built in 1914. After the fire in 1926, which destroyed much of Douglas, it was one of the few structures left standing. It was rebuilt, but only to be left abandoned a few years later. Today, the building remains somewhat intact, and the Treadwell Historic Preservation and Restoration Society plans to renovate it. This fall, I decided to learn more about the Treadwell Mine. A local newspaper article sparked my curiosity in the Ready Bullion Dam, which still stands today. I read that the dam is 500 feet long and 50 feet tall, and it sits in the valley below Mount Jumbo. The more I learned about the dam, the more I became determined to find it. At first, the trail is worn, and along the way there are many clues left from the days of the mine. The southeast Alaska temperate rainforest is especially beautiful in the golden light of early autumn. As I continued up the path, I discovered a large metal pipe that was covered in moss and small shrubs. From the newspaper article, I knew that the pipe led straight to the dam. The only historic building left on the trail is surprisingly intact. Even the red-painted wood walls still remain. Inside the building is full of metal gears, like those of the five stamp mills which once existed in each of the mines that operated here. There were once 960 stamps pounding and crushing ore in order to make it easier to extract gold. The trail is steep and grueling at times. There were many moments when I lost the pipe and almost lost my way. The real treasures of the trail were not man-made, but a product of Mother Nature. The trail is rich with fungus and mushrooms, and just when I thought I could hike no more, I came to an opening in the trees. A serene muskag lay before me, its marshy floor lined with Labrador tea and colorful leaves. After two hours of hiking, the sound of the stream got louder, and gray currant berries surrounded me. I could sense that I was close. I followed the last flattened portion of the pipe, and there at the end was the Ready Bullion Dam. Like everything else, even the colossal dam was covered in green moss, taken over by the earth. As I climbed to the top, I could see the giant logs laying on their sides, lashed together with metal. More spectacular than the dam itself is the valley behind it. Once a reservoir, the valley is now covered in mud, alder trees, and deer tracks. The shadow of Great Mount Jumbo hovers above. I started this adventure searching for a dam, but in the end I found so much more. Sometimes you find exactly what you're looking for. It's autumn in Alaska, and today I struck gold.